How's it going guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the Yamaha's engine and they're going to be showing you guys what a good top end looks like and a bad one. For example, some top ends could experience scoring in the cylinder, um, piston damage, and many more things. In today's video, we're going to be covering all of those and some good examples on what you can run versus what you can't. But without further ado, let's get started. So for the tools for this job, it, they're quite easy to get and readily available. Um, the first tool I'm going to be using is a 14 millimeter socket on a 3 inch ratchet. We're going to use some 2 cycle oil to put back into the cylinder once we're done examining it. And an optional um, tool is a torque wrench to torque the head back down. Once again, not totally necessary, but they are nice to have. And you can find one of these for like 30 bucks, like I mentioned. And, you know, it's definitely worth having. Okay, so the first step of this process is we're going to use our 14 millimeter um, socket wrench. And we're going to crack these head bolts loose. And when you retighten these, keep in mind you want to go ahead and tighten them in a X pattern. Just because if you tighten one side and then tighten the other, you could possibly warp the cylinder head. Not too big of a deal because you can get replacements, but it's better not to damage any parts while doing this. So you see I got the third one cracked loose. And while you're at it, go ahead and pop off the actual spark plug boot. Just because you don't want that there. Um, go ahead and crack this off. Our fourth and final nut. And once you get those all loosened, we can go ahead and get them by hand and pop the cylinder head off. And you guys are probably asking, how often should I do this to my two-cycle engine? And honestly, if you're not having any, any problems with it and you don't put too many miles on it, I would say at least twice a year because, you know, every six months you want to make sure that your engine is doing good. And you could possibly, like I said, have catastrophic failure if you don't, you know, look at it every so often. And, you know, it's better to order parts ahead of time so that way it doesn't get worse and damages your lower bottom end. So, you can see once I get all the washers off the head, you're probably noticing that, you know, this is shaved down. I did that for compression reasons, and I know you guys are going to say that's the squish band I just sanded. I didn't do it a ridiculous amount, so it's not going to affect how it runs. I just did it so that there's bare metal and not paint. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and remove the head gasket, which should just usually slide off. Sometimes it, like this one here, gets caught up on the threads, and you just have to keep manipulating it to get it off. But as you can see, with a little bit of pressure and patience, you can get this off. And yeah, so the head gas gets removed, and now we're going to take a look at the cylinder. So taking a look at the cylinder, we notice that inside of here, it honestly looks really healthy and you can run your finger over the cylinder bore. I don't feel any sort of scoring. I don't feel any sort of chrome lining peeling off and overall the cylinder looks in really good shape. So some of you are probably wondering what are the three types of cylinder material? The first material is chrome, the second material is nicocel, and the third and final is an iron bore. This one is a chrome cylinder. So on these, you're not going to really have scoring, but obviously it's possible. It's very unlikely though. Um, in my case, again, there's no, when you run over your hand, um, you want to feel no digs or marks. If you see a mark, but you can't feel it, that's completely normal. Those are just called scuffs. Like right there, I don't know if you'd be able to see it, but it looks like a scuff there. When I rubbed my finger over it, I didn't feel anything. So it's not a big deal. The Nicosil bores, I don't really have much experience with, but I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe they come on the BT100s and the YD100s, and most of the iron bore cylinders, like I said, are aftermarket, and they come on the 100cc kits. So some of you guys are going to have questions on why does my engines have marks in it, and that's probably why you're watching this video. Well, to give a brief explanation of why yours could have it, there's a couple reasons. For one, it could be the oil ratio that you're putting in your tank. The second reason is you're not warming it up enough, causing this aluminum piston to expand too much. And yeah, it's definitely one of those two reasons. Like I said, you're either running too little oil, which isn't cooling the motor properly and causing it to overheat and the second reason is probably the piston. So basically these pistons have steel rings on an aluminum piston in a chrome bore. Now your cylinder on pretty much all engines, I'm not going to specify which ones don't, but on most engines the cylinder is generally a harder metal. 
so it takes longer and there's more volume to it so it takes longer for this to expand out well as these little tiny pistons well you can see they're not that thick right so when this engine's getting like let's say at 160 200 degrees 240 and it's heating up so fast this piston can expand probably half a millimeter and cause your steel rings to close up because those little pins on there those are what the rings are held into and if those close up so much that they get close you know to that actual ring gap it can cause it to um catch on one of your transfer ports which you can see are right down there and it can catch on those and before you know it your engine's destroyed so what is my recommendation when warming up these engines? Honestly guys, I would say if you're living in a hotter climate, you obviously don't have to warm them up as much. And in my case, where it's summer outside, I would say probably at least warm it up for a good two minutes on one of these chrome bores. And like I said, that's just in between, you know, revving the throttle up and not nothing past half, nothing past half. You're just giving it little blips you know just blips the throttle and while you're doing that the motor is spooling up and warming up and everything like that and then you can go ahead and you know dump the clutch and very slowly go for a ride when i say very slowly i mean nothing past quarter throttle for driving um just because if you go past that you're making this piston expand ridiculously fast because now it's got a load on it now the rear wheel spinning and there's a ridiculous load on this when the engine's so cold so and this will play a bigger effect once you start upgrading it for example this engine has a 49 millimeter big bore kit on it with a g2 reed and a pipe well this guy needs a long time to warm up because not only does the piston have to expand but the reeds have to open up and the carburetor has to get flowing because like i said this engine sucks a lot more gas it burns harder and it has more power so the more power adders you add chances are the longer you're going to have to warm it up especially if you have an iron bore also, one thing I want to mention about cylinder damage, a reed valve can cause this because like I said guys, you probably hear most builders telling you that before braking you should not modify your motor. And that's totally true because these engines stock have around 2.5 horsepower to 3 horsepower, at least for the iron bores. Um, for 50 cc's it's around 1.2 to 1.5. Once you start adding a reed valve, once you start adding a pipe, this motor is going to rev a lot more and go from 6,000 RPM to probably 7 or 8,000 RPM. And like I said guys, with the piston expanding, the last thing you want to do is make it rev higher than it should. So only modify your engine once it's past break-in. And after that, you'll be golden. And here's the final reason to why your engine could have scoring damage is because you've done some recent port work and now it has score marks and you're just so confused because you think, oh, porting should clean up the airflow and should make it run better. Well, that's definitely true. But the problem is, is either one, you didn't clean the cylinder out well enough because when you're porting, guys, you use polishing compound and you can't just use brake clean. You got to use hot soapy water to get all that out. And I usually use a hose, an air compressor, get everything cleaned out. But another reason that nobody really talks about is when you do your porting, this is a prime example. This is my first port job. So guys, please don't leave any hate comments. But this is my first port job. And this cylinder is in wonderful shape. But somehow it didn't catch on those. And I did sand them in later, so that's why it didn't catch. But um, these port edges, when you port with a Dremel, right? That Dremel is spinning quite fast, and it could cause the actual metal on the cylinder lining to become sharp. So what will happen is these port edges will catch on the side of your piston and score it right on the intake side or exhaust side. It really depends where the rough edges are. But what I'm trying to say is that if you don't smooth those out, including the transfer ports, because it does expand there too as well, uh, you want to go ahead and hit it with a 320 grit sandpaper and then finish it with a 400. That will allow all these port edges to be really smooth. So when the piston's going up and down the cylinder, everything moves freely and is you know freely oiled and nothing can go wrong. So that pretty much covers everything you need to know. But with that being said, let's reassemble this motor and continue the video. So for reassembly, what I usually like to do is use a little bit of two-stroke oil and go ahead and line the cylinder with this. I do this because from rubbing around your finger and things like that, um, you're pretty much taking oil out of the cylinder. And for first startup, it's not a bad idea to have a little bit of oil in there just from uh, removing the head and everything like that. So just get a bit on your finger and rub it around in the cylinder walls and that will lube everything up for a first startup. And like I said, I know this engine's already broken in, but this definitely helps because like I said, you can have your finger in there and you know you take all the oil out and the dirt gets in there. 
So this will just help with um, keeping everything lubricated and making sure everything is nice and smooth. But once you go ahead and do that, you can get your head gasket and install that. So as you can see, I have my head gasket. Some people like to wipe this off. I usually just get a um, shop towel and just wipe any oil that I might see off of it. And it doesn't look like we're having any leaks. However, I do see something that's really interesting. So I don't know if we're going to be able to see this on camera. But right there, I don't know if you can tell, there's two brown marks on the head gasket. And I believe that's from the front side. This is really common. Even after um, sanding down the cylinder to make it seal better, I've still had problems with this. So I'm definitely going to have to look at that after the video. Okay, so we got the head gasket installed. And finally, we're going to take our cylinder head. Now, it doesn't matter if it goes this way or this way. Just make sure you don't have it facing um, this way or this way because no air is going to pass over that. Um, you want air to go through the fins and cool the motor down. I believe mine in the beginning of the video was facing this way. And we'll just slap the head on and then get our flat washer. And then our lock washer. And the nut which I believe is somewhere is here. I dropped it and I have no clue where I put it. So I'll catch you guys back once I find it. All right, guys, found all my head nuts. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall them onto the bike. Flat washer, lock washer, once again for the back, flat washer, there we go. Lock washer. Like I said, I, uh, I torqued this head down the next pattern to allow everything to seat properly and I would recommend if anybody wants to upgrade these nuts because what happens is these are like a dress up um, one I guess you could call it and there's a head on it and these studs actually stick out further than they should sometimes and I'll pop through the top and it will allow it so that the cylinder head cannot actually seal properly so I recommend going to your local hardware store or ordering online just some M8 by 125 um, nuts and that will allow this to seal really good I haven't had any issues with this one yet just because I don't think the studs are long enough to cause any problems but it's a good upgrade if you want to consider it so now we're getting these head nuts installed and like I said it's really easy to do and you don't need a torque wrench I'm gonna be using one just because I have one but the torque spec on these two cycle engines for these motorized bicycles is 8 foot pounds to 12 foot pounds. So you can do 8 foot pounds on the M6 bolts and then 12 foot pounds on these M8 ones just because they're a little bit stronger. But uh, I'll catch you guys back when I have these all torqued down. So the top end is all torqued down with the torque wrench and everything's back together. I think it's only right if we go ahead and fire it up for you guys. All right guys, we got the bike outside. We're gonna go ahead and turn the gas on, pop the choke. And uh, I just installed a new fuel line on it, so it might take a little bit longer to go just because there's not a lot of fuel in the system. But we're gonna shake the gas up and uh, give her a start up. Should start up pretty easily. This uh, G4 cylinder runs pretty good and starts every time. So uh, we'll take her up the driveway.
So guys, the bike ran good, and after taking off the head, we had no leaks. Um, if you enjoyed the video, don't hesitate. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and tell me down in the comments below what you thought of this video. Sorry I haven't been uploading too much lately. It's been ridiculously hot where I live, and um, there's a couple heat warnings, so haven't been able to upload a crazy amount. But I thought I would get that how-to for you guys out there. And when you're warming these up, guys, make sure not to rev them too high. Alright, see you guys in the next one.